Hello and welcome. I have hundreds, if not thousands, of shell script video tutorials on my YouTube channel, but I try to every once in a while go back to the basics for those beginners. So today I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to start writing a script. Uh, I'm going to kind of make it up as I go along, but show some basic concepts of shell scripts and how they work. We're going to focus on bash in this tutorial because that's very commonly the default shell on many, many systems. Most of what we're going to go over today will um, span out to other uh, shell interpreters, uh, but I'm going to focus on bash today. So let's go ahead and again, I'm, I'm just going to wing this and see how it goes. Here we are on our shell. First of all, as I said, uh, we're going to be working with bash today. Normally my default shell on my system for uh, when I go to my terminal, my shell, I use Z shell, but scripts I usually write in bash since that's one of the most common defaults on systems. Uh, but to confirm what your uh, shell is, one thing you can do is you can type in echo dollar sign zero at your shell and it should tell you what your shell is. In this case, I'm using bash. Um, so anything that starts with dollar sign in a shell script is going to be a variable. Uh, and then zero just means show me the variable for basically what is the, the main executable that we're running in this case, since we're at the shell prompt, there are prompt here, will, uh, it will tell us what shell we're in. So let's talk about the echo command. The echo command will echo whatever you say to it. So I can say, hello world. And it printed out, hello world. And again, we can create variables just by saying something like, let's say I want to say my name is Chris, right? And now I can say echo dollar sign name and it will say Chris or I can say echo hello dollar sign name and it says Chris and if I change that variable to something like John if I run that command again it will now instead of saying hello Chris it will say hello John so there we go now a way you can get to user inner input so let's say you want to ask them a question and get the input you would use the read command so I can say read and then I can give it a variable so I can say like name again and when I do that it's just gonna pause here and I can type in something whatever I type is gonna go into the variable name so I can change it back I can, I, well, now I'll just say Bob right Bob and now if I say hello name it says hello Bob uh, but just saying read like that will um, not tell the user what to do. So in a script you can use the echo command and then the read command, but in bash you don't need to do that. What I can do is I can do dash p and then in quotation say something like please enter your name. And now it's going to say please enter your name and I can go back to saying Chris and if I say echo hey dollar sign name it will say hey Chris. Now, uh, the read command, some commands we're going to do are built into your shell and some are external commands. The echo command is built into bash and the read command is built into bash or whatever shell you're running. So they may vary slightly different shells. So example, if I open up another terminal here, so down here at the bottom of the screen, this is actually the Z shell. If I try to run that same command, so I can do read and name and I can type in Chris and I can say echo dollar sign name and it'll print that out. But if I try to use that uh, prompt command, dash P, and I can say, please, I'm just going to say name. I'm not going to type that all out because it's going to give me an error because uh, the read command in the Z shell doesn't have that dash P property. Uh, it might have something similar. I'm not familiar with it. If you go into its manual file, uh, you can find out. So what is the manual file? Uh, when you're in a shell, pretty much every shell command you have should have a readme or a manual file uh, that tells you how it works. Uh, some manual files are better than others. Uh, but if I was to do man and I was to type in read here, it's going to give me basically a big readme file that I can read through and find out all about the readme command or read not readme command but read command. Um, so, and you can even do something like man bash, and it's going to give you a whole bunch of stuff about bash, right? This is going to be a long one because bash is a pretty complex program. So if you're never ever not sure what to do something, Googling it is helpful, but also using the man file is helpful. And a good man file will usually have examples at the bottom. That's not always true, but it's nice when they do. So far, we've been running commands, you know, creating variables and echoing stuff out and getting user input right here at the shell. But that's not how you're going. You'll use the shell a lot, but if you're going to write a script, you're going to write a script, which means you need to create basically a text file. Now, you can use whatever text file you want. Oh, also, there's a clear command 
that clears the screen. But also, if you're at the shell, so let me just uh, run a couple of commands here just to put something on the screen. You can also hit Control L in most cases to clear the screen, so you don't have to type clear. When you're creating a script, you would have to type clear to clear the screen. So we're going to create a script now, right? That's the point of this video. You can use whatever text editor you like. Some people like Nano. You can use graphical ones like Gedit. I think there's a Kedit as well. There's lots of them. I think one's called LeafPad. Uh, I prefer Vim, which some people consider complex. Uh, but you can use whatever text editor you want. It doesn't matter as long as it's a text editor and not like a Word document editor. Uh, so don't use like Microsoft Word or, or you know or open up off Open Office and try to type something. Uh, and well, I suppose you could and then save it as a text file, but we're not going to get into that. I'm just going to create a file called my script, right? Now, normally if it's a shell script file, you're going to do .sh, but the extension does not matter. Your computer does not care about the extension. That's there for you. What matters is the first line of the script, which is called the shebang line, uh, which in this case, since it's a bash script we're running, we would do uh, pound exclamation mark forward slash bin forward slash bash because what that is your bash shell your bash interpreter or your z shell interpreter or whatever shell you use that's a program that's basically going to read this file line by line but you have to tell it which one to use because it could be a python script some people write scripts in python and you would tell it where python is on the system and what version of python and it would start reading this file so the shell the shebang line is important because if you don't put that uh, what will normally happen is it's going to try to run this script with wherever the default shell is and it may not be bash and you might have some issues. Uh, so let's go ahead and now I, you just, right here you write commands like you would at the shell but it, you're saving as a text file and then again it's going to read through it line for line. So I can say echo hello world, right? I'm going to save that file and now the first time you run it you need to make it executable because if I don't, so if I do dot slash my script dot sh whoops dot sh it's going to tell me that it doesn't have permission to run this is a security thing you don't want executables you want programs that you download to be able to just run by accident so you have to make them executable and that's super simple you just say change mod plus x for executable and then you're going to say the name of the file you don't have to do that again on this system you know as long as you do it once on this system uh, it will always be executable. The only time it, it won't be is like if you download it from a website, you will have to ex make it executable again. So what's the dot slash part of that? The dot slash is saying, look for the script in the current directory. Otherwise, it's going to look for it in a system directory, your system path, one of your path files, which we'll talk about in another video. Um, but dot slash just says, run the script in this folder. Because you might have a myscript.sh somewhere else on your system. It's saying, look in this directory. Uh, so run it from this directory, we'll hit enter, and there it says hello world. Uh, also at your shell, you should be able to hit your up and down arrow, if you haven't noticed me doing that yet, to go through previous commands. There's a lot of shortcuts in the actual shell that we can look at. Uh, I'm not going to get into them too much, but I'm going to go back up to my vim command, again, whatever text editor you use, and in here, I'm going to add in that readme command, read, not readme, I keep saying readme, read command, and I'm going to say prompt please enter your name and then I'll give it the variable name and then down here I can just say I just realized I spelled world wrong name okay and now we've changed that again we don't have to make it executable again we'll just run that script and I'll say please enter your name I'll say John and I'll say hello John now another command we can look at here is a sleep command the sleep command you give it a number and it will sleep for that number a second so I can say one second it just pauses for one second. If I say two, two, it's going to go two seconds. I can also say like one M, which would be one minute. Now, if a command is running and you want to uh, kill it or we'll say cancel it, is control C. Control C will cancel that command uh, in most cases. Uh, you can also do fractions of a second. So if I want to say half a second, I can say sleep 0.5 and it will sleep 0.5 seconds. There's other options there. Again, you can use the man command for manual and look at other options for the sleep command. Actually, there's not much in there, so forget that. <laughs> uh, usually there's more options. This is a very basic command. So let's do this. Let's go back into our script. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to add a clear command at the top. And uh, then down here, I'm going to add in a sleep 
for two seconds. So now, when I run my script, it's going to clear the screen, ask me my name. I'm going to say Bob this time. It'll say, hello, Bob. It will wait one or two seconds. I forget what I put in there. And then exit out. So it kind of holds it there. So now what we can do is we can add in another line. And I can say, let's clear the screen again, just for fun. We're going to clear the screen. Depending on what you do, and lots of times you don't want to clear the screen because you want to leave information on the screen. But this little program is just kind of interacting with the user. So uh, clearing the screen might be nice. I can say, hey, dollar sign name, what is your favorite color? And here we can put color. And then when they hit enter, I can say echo, I like dollar sign color as well. And then we'll say sleep for two seconds, and then we'll say echo, bye. We'll run our command again, and this time I'll put in my name, Chris. Hello, Chris. And then it says, hey, Chris, what is your favorite color? And I'll say red. And it says, I like red as well. Bye. Now, let's have a little more fun with this. Uh, we can, again, create variables at the top, or how about this, we'll run the date command. If you just run the date command, it tells you the date and time. But you can also format different ways. I can say uh, plus percent F, capital F, and it's going to format it like this with the year, month, and day. Uh, you can do other things as well. I can just do capital Y, and it will give me the year. And what I can do is I can do dash and then percent, uh, I think lowercase m is the month, and I can do dash percent uh, D for day and it will give me the day. And of course I can put that in different orders. If I wanted to go year at the end and days at the beginning, I can do that. I can uh, do lowercase y, I think, will give me, yeah, just the two digit for the year. And uh, if I do, I can also put other things in between these. I can go like this, I can do slashes instead of dashes. Again, if you look at the man file, and you know this man file will have a lot of information in it, you can see a lot of these different, <laughs> I'm getting a spam call because I forgot to turn off my phone. Let me take care of that real quick. I'm usually better about turning off my phone before videos. Power off. So that was a spam call. Go ahead and feel free to call that number and tell them not to call me anymore. Um, you can see all these different options here. So if you wanted uh, the full uh, day, a weekday name like Sunday, you can do capital A. Uh, you can do abbreviation of the month with lowercase b, the full name of the month would be. So let's go ahead and give those a couple a, a try. So I can go here and I, what did I say? Lowercase b is the month, capital B is the full month. Uh, what do we say? A is the day of the week and I guess capital A would be the full name. So you can do all these different things uh, and use them in your script. So let's go ahead and use them in our script. So I hit control L again to clear my screen. and. Uh, I am going to come in here and I'm going to be like, uh, let's see. I can use that command. Again, I can just put the date command in here. And if I run my script like so, I can say John, John, I can say blue. And then it's going to print the date there and it's going to say bye. But I could do this. I could put that into a variable and uh, I could say something like D equals. And then if I put inside, uh, I'm going to put inside quotations because I want this to be a string, uh, but dollar sign and then parentheses, I can put a command and whatever that output of that command is will now be in the variable D. So I can do uh, plus percent F and then down here I can say echo did you know the date and time is dollar sign D question mark. Now, if I run this again, I'll say John and I'll say blue. And then it says, Oh, I didn't. Did you know the date and time is that's the date Did I, did I do plus F? What did I do? Yeah. So if I just do it without the plus F and I just do the date, it will give the date and time. So again, John, 
and we'll say green. It says, did you know that that date and time is this? But I'm just trying to give you examples of how you can use commands in your output. Now, I don't have to put that into a variable, right? I could come down here and I can just say date and it will do the same thing. So I'll say Chris, I'll say red, and you can see it output the same command. So basically, anytime you put dollar sign and then a command inside parentheses, and it can be multiple commands, the output of that will be placed there as, as a string. So you can put it into a variable or you can put it into here. Why would you do one or the other? Well, if this command was really long, you probably wouldn't want it in your your echo command. You could break it up, put it in a variable, then put it there. But also, let's say you want to get the current time at a certain point in your script and use that at certain points in the script, but you don't want it to change. If you ran the date command each time, it's going to change that time each, each time you call that command. A plus commands could take a while to run, so you may want to run it once, put it in a variable, and then use it multiple times in your script. Um, let's see. What else can we go over today? Oh, here's an important one. Uh, writing to files and reading from files. So let's go back out to our shell here. And let's say I say echo, and I can say just my name, Chris, right? It echoes it out. But if I use a greater than symbol and then give a file name, like name.txt, now I just create a file called name.txt, and within it, if I type in, you know, use my text editor, I can open it up, and it says Chris. If I was to run that command again with a, another name, what it's going to do is going to overwrite that. Basically, it just took that file, it erased the old one and created a new one, right? It says John inside. If I wanted to add to it, instead of just doing greater than, I'm going to do greater than, greater than, and that will append it to it. So instead of John here, I'll say Bob. And if I open up that file, it now says John Bob. And if I was to run that again with maybe... Sally. I can open up that file and now it says John, Bob, Sally, right? Let's say I don't want to open up my text editor every time I want to see what's in that file. I can use the cat command. Cat and the name of the file and it will cat out. It will display on the screen what you do. Why cat? That's short for concatenate. It's actually a command that's designed to allow you to attach multiple files together, concatenate them together. But most of the time it's used just to display what's inside a file. Um, so we've written to a file, created a new file, we've appended to a file, we've read the file. But the thing is, you can also do the same thing with the output of any command. So the output of this echo command is Sally and put it in there. But if I was to do date, right, date gives us the date and time, I can append that to the file as well. And now if I cat out name.txt, it has here the output of that command. So the output of any command can be dumped into a file and then later read. Uh, again, if I was to come in here and change this back to a single, single greater than, it will then put that into the file, overriding everything else, and now we just have the date so you can put a timestamp in the file if you want, right? And um, of course, let's say we wanted to create a log. We want the date and time of something that happens and then what that is that happens. So clear the screen here real quick. I can again come up here and I can say echo and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do pipe symbol and then I'm going to say John entered room, right? So I'm going to do that greater than, I'm just going to call this access.log. Now if I cut out access.log, gives me a date and time and it tells me that John enters the room. So let's say you have sensors in a room and you want to act and uh, have the script run whenever someone enters the room, they scan their key card or whatever. Well, now we know when John entered the room. And then later on, we come in, you know, Sally comes and scans her ID badge. And now if we cat that out, we can see, okay, at this date and this time on this year, this, this time zone, uh, Sally entered the room. So we can do stuff like that. So again, dollar sign and parentheses will run a command and wherever the output of that command will be put in the place of this as a string. A string is just text, right? So we're echoing out the output of that command and whatever text we want here. And I divide it up by a, a pipe symbol. The pipe symbol can be used to pipe uh, different commands into another command, the output of one command into another. 
I'm not sure if I want to get into that into this video too much. Um, that's something that you will learn. Is one of the things that makes shell scripts super powerful uh, is that you can take the output of one command and put it into another. Kind of like we've dumped stuff into a file, but instead of doing that, we want to put it into a, another command, which actually maybe I'll do in the next video. Maybe I'll have a second part of this. But I just wanted to go over this real quick. I hope you learned a lot. So we learned how to display text on the screen, get user input into a variable, how to do stuff with that variable. Um, let, let's do a little bit more with that. Let's, let's go into it just as a little bit more of a um, overview of what we're doing. I'm going to say, I'm going to delete this and this, and then I'm going to say, clear the screen again, read dash P, what is your friend's name? And we'll say name, or we'll just say friend, right? And then I'm going to, I'll clear the screen again, and I'll say echo. One day dollar sign name tried Linux. Dollar sign name loved Linux. Dollar sign name went and told dollar sign friend about Linux. And then we'll say Dollar sign friend didn't get it at first, comma, but after trying, trying, testing it out, dollar sign friend saw what dollar sign name was talking about. And they both love dollar sign color, right? So I have multiple lines. I echoed out. Uh, I only have the quotations at the beginning and the end here, so I can do multiple lines. If I put a quotation mark somewhere inside here, I would have to um, uh, backslash it out. So if there was a quotation, let's say went and told was part of quotation, I couldn't do this because it would mess up our echo command. So I would have to put a backslash before that to indicate that these are actually supposed to be quotations. But that's not an issue right now with what we're doing. I wanted to say that in case you threw some in there. So if I did everything right, I can say my script. I can say my name is Chris. I can say I like black. And my friend's name is John. And it says, one day, Chris tried Linux. Chris loved Linux. Chris went and told John about Linux. John didn't get it at first, but after testing it out, John saw what Chris was talking about, and they both love black. Bye. That's our script. So uh, I do hope you learned something, and I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope that you start writing scripts. Uh, I mean, a lot of script writing are the commands and, and things that we went over today. Uh, beyond that is, uh, you know, Basically, if-then statements, testing stuff, and then basically sorting and displaying data in different ways. So you're 80% you're there to writing most scripts, I would say. So thanks for, again for watching. Films by Chris.com. Go ahead, check out my website, and I hope that you have a great day.